Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Kang. So in this short video, I'm going to talk about the method of maximum likelihood estimation, which is commonly used to estimate uh, parameters of interest in statistical models. Okay, so just to give you a, a simple idea about this method. So suppose we have the following random variables that are drawn from a particular probability distribution with the following um, density function, pro probability density function, or it could be a pro probability mass function, right? depending on whether x, the random variable x is continuous or discrete. All right? So if all these n random variables are independent, then we can specify the likelihood of the sample as simply the product of the densities, right? So this is the likelihood function. So when we want to find um, the maximum likelihood estimator for the parameter theta, so what we do is we basically try to find um, the value of theta right in the parameter space such that um, the likelihood function becomes as large as possible. So if we sketch the graph here, so suppose this is your theta, and um, the likelihood function looks like this, okay? All right, so for different uh, samples, your likelihood function will uh, have a different shape, but generally, let's consider this particular likelihood function. So our goal is to find the value of theta that makes the likelihood function as large as possible. So this is the value that we want, and this is the value for which um, the likelihood function is maximized, right? So so basically, um, we can say that theta hat right, is the argument that maximizes the likelihood function, okay? When um, your theta is um, a value in the parameter space, right? Okay. So if you look at this particular likelihood function, um, so if you have a single uh, maximum, right? So this maximum corresponds to uh, a stationary point, right? So you could actually use, uh, we could actually use calculus uh, methods to, to find this point, right? For example, uh, this would involve finding the, um, um, the derivative of the likelihood function with respect to theta, and we solve it, we set it to zero, right? So that would uh, help us find this particular value, right? The stationary point, right? So then you solve for theta. And after that, of course, we confirm that the uh, second order derivative is um, negative, right? Uh, more generally, instead of working with the likelihood function, we work with the log uh, likelihood because uh, the, the log of a product becomes a sum. So it's much more, much uh, easier to to uh, solve for theta than uh, solving in the uh, original likelihood form, right? Okay, so now that we know something about the idea of uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimation, so then we can look at uh, some further examples. Now before we, we uh, proceed, um, it is important to note the following, right? It is not always that your maximum occurs at some point that's interior to the uh, 
in the uh, range of the parameter values, right? Um, in some situations, your likelihood function may actually look like this. And uh, in this case, the maximum actually occurs at the boundaries, right? So in this case, this is where your L is, um, is uh, maximized, right, in this case. So this is where the maximum occurs. And for such cases, um, you cannot use um, calculus methods to, to find it, but you have to use um, some other methods that involve the uh, indicator function. Okay, so, so don't always uh, charge straight into taking derivatives and solving for uh, the parameter of parameter of interest because uh, that only works if the uh, maximum uh, actually occurs at some point that's interior in the parameter space all right okay so let's look at some concrete examples right so suppose we have um, the normal distribution right so the normal distribution has uh, parameters uh, mu and sigma square right so it's uh, probability density function is given by 1 over square root of 2 pi sigma square multiplied by the exponential function of x minus mu square over 2 sigma square right here the x is uh, any value in the real line and also our mu is any value in the real line and uh, but the sigma square is positive right the variance is positive so the likelihood function right when you have a random sample of size n all of them drawn from this normal distribution this would give us um, the following uh, likelihood function so this will be 1 over 2 pi sigma square power n over 2 and over here this would be exponential minus sum of xi as mu square 2 sigma square i equals to 1 n right and working with the log form we take the log of l this gives us uh, minus sum okay so this gives us uh, this particular form minus n over 2 log um, 2 pi sigma square right okay so here we have two uh, parameters uh, mu and sigma square right so and and because these two parameters are independent so we basically will just take partial derivatives with respect to this each of these uh, parameters and then solve for uh, by solve for that for solve for uh, mu and sigma square by setting them setting the first order derivative to zero so basically uh, let's try the first one so uh, the derivative of d log l over d of mu is equal to um, so sum so this gives us an x i minus mu so the two comes down cancels the minus you take the derivative cancel with the minus so you get this we set it to zero and uh, this implies that my mu um, is equal to um, sum of xi over n right so so i would set my maximum likelihood estimator for mu as the sample mean which makes sense right and now um, let's move on to the next part which is uh, trying to find the uh, maximum likelihood estimator for the variance so i'm going to erase this part so of course you can check that the second order derivative is actually uh, uh, negative to make sure that uh, uh, the sample mean is the maximum likelihood estimator for, for mu. So to proceed, so we have d log l over d sigma square, right? So that would give us um, minus, so 
sigma k. So this will give us uh, 2 sigma power 4. And here the, uh, the minus would uh, disappear. So we have positive. So over here, we basically have uh, minus n over 2 sigma square, right? And we set this to 0, right? So to make it easy, so we set it to 0. And uh, basically, we multiply with uh, sigma square here. So we have sigma power 4, right? So basically, uh, the denominator is the same. So this uh, disappears when you multiply both sides by 2 sigma power 4. So we end up having sigma square equals to sum of xi minus uh, mu square over n, right? But uh, so the maximum likelihood estimator for the uh, population variance, sigma square hat, will be equal to this thing. And you have to replace the mu with the uh, maximum likelihood estimator form, right? So basically, you have the sum of xi minus x bar squared over n, right? So, so this is uh, the uh, average this is exactly the average of the sum of squared deviations, right? Um, generally, um, um, the, the so if you remember, okay, so the sample variance, uh, the sample variance is given by this form, right? The, where the denominator is. Uh, n minus 1. So this is the unbiased uh, estimator for sigma square. But um, the maximum likelihood estimator for sigma square is actually slightly different. Instead of dividing by n minus 1, it's divided by n. So it has a, a slight bias. But um, it's OK, right? Uh, as n becomes um, quite large, then um, basically uh, both estimators lead to the same uh, almost the same value, right? Okay, so now we know that uh, um, for the case of the normal model, so we have um, the mu hat equals to x bar and uh, sigma square hat equals to summation xi x bar squared over n. So these are the maximum likelihood uh, estimators for mu and sigma square when the model is a uh, uh, normal model, okay? Now, I'm going to talk about uh, some other kinds of... Uh, so, so for this kind of uh, distributions, we know that the, um, the support of the the uh, distribution does not depend on the parameter, right? Like, for example, your fx just now for the normal model, um, the support actually uh, is any value in the real line, and this, this does not depend on, on mu or sigma square, okay? Now, there is a class uh, of uh, models where the support actually depends on the um, parameter of interest, right? So can you give an example? All right. So you probably know about this. So the simplest example is the uniform uh, distribution, right? So if you have a uniform distribution over an interval, let's say from zero to theta. So this is a very simple um, model, right? So you have, uh, so this is my fx is equal to one over theta, right? So this is theta, this is f of uh, x. So here you have, uh, <coughs> so, so sorry, this is uh, this should be x here. Okay, so it stops at theta. 
and therefore the height here is 1 over theta right so that the area of this rectangle is equal to 1 uh, generally um, you might recall that it's uh, we might just write it like this right elsewhere so this one is the x is uh, between theta and uh, 0 right now I want to introduce to you a, a very important uh, representation of um, probability density functions or probability mass functions that have support that depend on the parameter of interest using indicator function right so first before that I want to talk about the indicator function so the indicator function uh, is basically a, a very simple function it's written like this so the one and here there is actually some kind of um, addition okay so and this is defined as equal to 1 if the condition is true okay and 0 if the condition is false right so this is called an indicator function so an example would be let's say i um, x greater than or equals to 1 so this would mean that it will be 1 if my x is greater than or equals to 1 or 0 if my x is less than 1 okay right so it's basically just some kind of uh, a 0 1 to, uh, it, it gives a 0 1 value and in fact this is uh, is in fact is actually a Bernoulli random variable okay a Bernoulli random variable with uh, success probability given by this case okay in this in this particular case right the condition okay. the probability that the condition is true okay now going back to the uh, uh, going back to the normal uh, sorry the the uniform distribution so we can actually write the uh, prob probability density function of the uniform distribution uh, using the indicator function as follows right so I could write my fx as 1 over theta multiplied by the indicator function my x being between um, 0 and theta right so basically um, this is a very concise uh, representation of this form okay and as you can see this as you as we are going to see this form has uh, a lot of advantages and um, especially when you try to work with likelihood functions right so let's continue so suppose my x1 x2 and xn they all come from the uniform distribution with uh, interval 0 to theta right so the likelihood function would be equal to 1 over theta power of n right and of course you multiply all the indicator functions right i xi less than theta 0 okay all right now I want you to think about what this actually means okay can we so working with a product is not uh, that great so we need to figure out a, a more concise um, representation for this product right so here this product will e will be equal to 1 all right only when all the individual um, indicators right are equal to 1 right because if if even one of them is not true then this product will be equal to zero right so in order for this this uh, product to be equal to one then all the xi's must be between zero and theta right okay so we want all of them they must be between 0 and theta 
And what does this mean actually? Okay, so here we want our likelihood function to be equal to this. Right. And here we want all our xi to be between zero, uh, between zero and to be between zero and theta. Right. Now I claim that this is simply requiring that the maximum of my xi's right, to be below theta. All right. If all the xi's are less than theta, that means the largest of the xi's is less than theta. So instead of using so this this uh, equivalence is very important right so so with this equivalence um, so instead of talking about the product of uh, n um, indicators is in n indicator functions we we basically can just talk about a single indicator function um, that works with this particular statistic right the statistic is the max okay Right, and, and if we want to find out um, uh, what uh, value of theta maximizes L, so here we cannot use the standard uh, calculus methods because if we sketch, uh, let's uh, sketch the uh, likelihood function. So this is the likelihood function, I'll just write it as L. The likelihood function, as you can see over here, this is uh, decreasing in theta, right? Okay, and so it starts when the theta uh, becomes large, so the denominator becomes large. So one over a large denominator is actually decreasing, so it will decay like this. Right? So obviously, obviously, um, the the likelihood, right? The likelihood function is largest right at the beginning okay so so then we look at this condition right so my theta so the max max of uh, xi is less than theta so theta is greater than the max of xi all right okay so my theta i know starts from max okay so this actually means that my maximum the value that maximizes my likelihood of function is um, uh, theta hat right so so here my theta hat is max of xi okay and this is equal to the MLE of theta okay so here we have uh, obtained a, a an order statistic right the max is an order statistic um, through the use of uh, an order statistics as the maximum likelihood estimator of the parameter of interest by using the indicator function and then bearing in mind that um, um, uh, sketching a graph here helps a lot okay all right okay so this is the uh, maximum likelihood estimator for um, theta all right of a uniform distribution um, so this is actually not uh, uh, mysterious at all because uh, if you consider the common sense, right? In the common sense, 
with some common sense. So this is your theta and this is, uh, this is your fx. So this is the probability density function, right? Now, when you collect samples, right? So your x1, x2, so this may be your x1, this may be your x2, and so on, and x3, and, and so on, right? If you want to use this uh, set of uh, values that's drawn from this uniform distribution to estimate your theta, of course, you would take the value that is closest to theta, right? The value that's closest to theta would be a good estimator for theta, all right? And um, the value that is closest to it, of course, will be the maximum among the set of observations that you have here, okay? Now, of course, there are other uh, possible estimators of um, theta, and uh, some of these may be uh, based on the mean, right? Because uh, the mean uh, of the uniform distribution is theta over 2, and we can estimate uh, theta over 2 as uh, the sample mean, right? The sample mean would, would be sitting in the middle, so I could use uh, theta hat equals to 2x bar um, as an estimator of theta hat. But uh, later, as you will study, you will find that um, for uh, each model has a, something called a sufficient statistic. Um, and uh, for the case of a uniform distribution, the sufficient statistic for theta is the max of the x size. Okay, the sample mean is not a sufficient statistic, right? And uh, there are some deficiencies with using statistics that are not uh, sufficient statistics as estimators. Okay. All right. To close this, uh, so to close this video, so I'm going to uh, look at one more example. So this example involves the truncated exponential. Distribution, right? Truncated exponential distribution. So, which basically has this form uh, e of minus x minus uh, theta, all right, where my um, x is. Uh, larger than theta, okay? So, and of course, my theta is a positive, uh, it's a positive constant, so basically the, the distribution looks like this, so starting from uh, theta, so you basically will have, uh, so one is here, and then you start to decay, right? Okay, so this is kind of like a shifted exponential, right? So when your x is less than zero, so it's actually, um, so it's defined like this, right? So zero elsewhere, okay? Now, if we want to find the maximum likelihood estimator for theta, so we will use the technique of writing it in terms of the indicator function. So the indicator function here would be my x, has to be larger than theta, right? Okay, so this is the indicator function, right? So if we consider the likelihood function for NID uh, observations that are obtained from the truncated exponential distribution, then we simply have the following. This i equals to 1n. So this is again the product, right, of um, indicators i from 1 to n, right? Now, as as usual, we want to, uh, instead of working with the product of indicators, we will try to figure out uh, a single indicator function um, that can summarize, right, the information in this product. So let's think about this. So this product will only be equal to 1, if all the xi's are greater than or equals uh, greater than theta, right? So all of them, all the xi must be larger than theta, right? So what does that mean? 
Okay, so if you think of the values that you can draw from this distribution, so you can draw the values that are like this, right? So all the values that you get will fall like this, okay? And all of them have to be larger than theta. This means that the smallest among them, the minimum, must be larger than theta, right? If all of them are larger than theta, then the smallest among them must be larger than theta, right? So instead of this product, we can have this representation. So this is indicator minimum of xi uh, greater than theta. All right. So this is our likelihood function. So let's write this again. It's be e minus summation xi minus theta i minimum of xi greater than theta, right? Um, and okay. So, as usual, we can sketch a graph here, a function of the likelihood function with respect to theta. And let's see. So this is an exponential function, right? Um, So basically, we have uh, something like this, right? So again, it is, um, so let's see. So this basically is e of minus the sum um, plus in theta. greater than theta, right? Okay, so now we can figure out, uh, so our theta, right? Our theta cannot, uh, so over here, it says that the theta cannot exceed the minimum, right? So that means there is a boundary here, Okay, for which the um, function will become zero, right, if it exceeds, okay? So now let's consider, right, if, if our theta is, um, is uh, very close, right, to the minimum, okay? So basically, uh, so over here, so this term is basically a, a constant, Right. It's a, it's basically a constant that's uh, dependent on the data, right? So 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 at the end we basically have um, something like a times e of n theta. Okay. Which means um, we basically have something some function like this, right? So this is exponentially increasing, so it will go until like here okay so so here obviously if you take uh, theta to be equal to the minimum all right so then your likelihood function is maximized right because it's a uh, monotone increasing okay so therefore my maximum likelihood estimator for theta is the minimum, right? The smallest value among the xi's, okay? And this makes perfect sense because if we go back to the truncated uh, density, truncated the exponential probability density function. So if we collect samples, right? So our random variables may be some values like this. And our theta is here. 
so so basically the the value that um, is uh, closest to theta right will be a good estimator for theta and the value that's closest to it will be the minimum among the xi right okay so I hope this uh, in this short uh, uh, video we have uh, developed a good ideas about how to find maximum likelihood estimators in the case when uh, our uh, probability uh, density function or probability mass function has a support that does not depend on the uh, parameters so in that case it's just a straightforward uh, application of uh, calculus methods right and in the case when your support actually depends on the parameter then please use the method of indicator functions all right and um, and usually in such cases your uh, maximum likelihood estimators uh, will involve um, the order statistics like the maximum or the minimum okay and uh, remember to help uh, to help you understand these things by sketching graphs right so the graphs are very important and they will help you understand why uh, the result that you obtain in such cases is reasonable okay so that's all for this uh, short uh, video thanks for listening